Hi, good morning and welcome to week seven. Um, we are almost one half of the way through the semester and I just wanted to take a moment to um, just kind of provide some context for what the next couple of weeks of the semester are gonna look like. Um, and then also talk a little bit about artifact analyses and um, some things that are going to um, uh, change going forward just a little bit. So we are finishing up our second unit this week, uh, learning about Islam and the uh, different cultural genres that come with that. Um, so I am um, always looking forward to seeing your interpretations of the material, of um, how Muslims work towards using art, architecture, um, scripts, um, calligraphy, etc., to um, explain and describe their culture and their religion. Um, this is one of my favorite weeks. I think that uh, Muslim mosques are absolutely stunning. I am excited to see you. Um, I'm excited for you to see them in more detail um, and to hear your thoughts about this. At the end of this week, going into next week, there will be a unit test on the three religions. Um, this will be a little bit longer. Um, tests will be um, longer as we go throughout the semester, um, but this will be, um, again, an online test for those of you who have extended time um, with accommodations. Um, I will make sure that those are set in place before you have to take the test. Um, starting uh, next week, we also start our next unit. Our next unit is going to be longer. It's going to be five weeks um, because we cover um, the pre-Renaissance time period into the Renaissance, both in Italy and in the north, so the northern uh, the northern Renaissance. So um, unlike the first two weeks, you will do one unit question and then you'll make sure you'll respond to four of the other uh, topics throughout the week. Um, so just making sure that you are aware of that. Um, and that means that our unit test for unit three, so medieval era, and the Renaissance will be a little bit longer than we've seen for units one and for unit two. Um, and that will take us into our final unit, the Reformation and Counter-Reformation. And um, then it's the end of the semester, so it's gonna fly by. Um, so I wanted to talk in a little bit more detail about the artifact analyses. Um, some of you are doing great. You're getting 10s out of 10. Um, keep that up. Um, keep making those connections between um, previous artifacts and the current artifact that you're selecting um, and making sure that you are um, thinking about uh, where your theme might be going, even though we're only halfway through the semester, or almost halfway through the semester. Um, hopefully you're seeing that theme evolve in some way, shape or form. Um, however, I am noticing that um, for some of you, uh, there needs to be a little bit of a refocus. Um, so I think there started to become a bit of a reliance on outside sources. I am not interested in what outside sources say. I am interested in how you are interpreting the material and how you are defending the reason for your artifact being um, connected to your theme. So going forward in both the selection of your artifact as well as what you're using to justify and defend your reasoning for it being your um, uh, being connected to your theme, um, the only material that I would like you to use are the textbook and any weekly resources that I've provided in the weekly resources folder. Um, ultimately, I want to know how you are describing the artifact in detail, both literally and figuratively. And then I want to know in detail how you are seeing this as a reflection of your theme. So it's important to remember that this really isn't a right or wrong answer assignment. Um, one artifact can be used as four different themes. So it's all in how you are defending that. So what are you seeing in that artifact that is reflective of the culture's values of whatever your theme is? So spiritual belief or science, innovation, and technology. Um, for those of you who are using outside research, um, I think in many cases, you are complicating things a little too much. 
Um, in essence, this is a really simple assignment. Part one, describe that artifact to me in detail. Pretend that you're describing it to someone who's never seen it before, both in terms of its physical properties as well as its figurative uses. And then tell me why this is a representation of your theme. That's basically it. Where the points come into play is the detail that you're using for that. So I am available to talk through this with you. Um, I'm happy to provide you examples from previous semesters of what this might look like if you still are feeling like you're struggling. Um, currently, um, after this week, you should have um, 80 points of artifact analyses. So if you are um, anywhere between 50 points and below, um, that's, that's a little problematic and we're gonna have to work to um, improve that. Um, if you have not been reading the feedback that I've left you, that's also really important to do. Um, I will write out exactly what is still missing and what I'm looking for. Um, so make sure that you are reading through that feedback. Um, you want to be at least at a 50 out of 80 or higher um, going into this next week. So that's gonna be really important. Um, so um, just as a recap, going forward, book, so our textbook and the weekly resources that are provided, um, these are where your artifacts need to come from. Um, especially if you've been doing artifacts from the internet that you haven't identified or cited or sourced. Um, this is a problem because I can't go follow up on those. So this is to make sure that we're all working off of um, the same work. And, and then that detail is important. So being really detailed about how you're seeing this artifact literally and figuratively, and then how you are um, seeing it connected to your theme. Um, if you need to talk about this, my office hours are Mondays and Wednesdays from 12.30 to 1.30. Um, I'm also happy to meet with you over Zoom at a different time. My office is over in Ada um, at the APEN campus, uh, room 1106, or the Zoom link is in the syllabus. Um, after this week, we head into the Middle Ages. So we'll be talking about chivalry and knights, and we'll be talking about um, epic tales um, that building that are building off um, stories like Gilgamesh, stories like the Odyssey and the Iliad. Um, we'll be looking at um, castles. We will be looking at cathedrals that get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, we'll be looking at the impact of um, religion on society, but then also look at the idea of humanism and the fact that man can explain things. It doesn't just have to be God that's explaining things. Um, so we'll be looking at how that changes things into the Renaissance. And then also be looking at the differences between how the Renaissance manifests in the South and Italy um, with the, the images you might be familiar with, with uh, La Primavera, or um, the birth of Venus, or Michelangelo's David. Um, we'll be comparing that with how the, um, the Renaissance manifests up in the North, which um, is gonna be very, very different. And so being able to identify those going forward um, is gonna be really helpful on your test. So thanks for sticking this video out. Um, I'll kind of put the highlights um, in the text below, but I strongly recommend um, that you uh, watch this through. Um, and if you've gotten to the end of this video and you send me an email with um, the secret password um, to show me that you have um, listened to this whole thing, um, then please send me an email um, with uh, humanities password in the subject line and the password is cat and mouse. All right, have a great week.